Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. As always, my favorite part of the week is being here with all of you, my favorite listeners, getting to bring you some of the most amazing people from and locally, um, just to some great new insights, some perception shifting, and some new ways of about thinking about old things getting you some new questions to ask to help you to move your life forward, to move your business forward, and most of all, just to help you feel better about you and about everything that's happening. So today, I have something that on my show, I have someone on my show, and what's great is she's actually here in the studio with me. And I don't often get to have my my guests in the studio because so often they call in because they're from all over the world, so you never know where they're going to be at any one moment in time. And I just love it because... Even though my show is on iHeartRadio, it broadcasts out of WAXE in Vero Beach, Florida. So we also have a local component to the show. So as all of you, my loyal listeners know, and even if you're new, you're going to hear this now, self-care has been something that I've struggled with for most of my life. I've always taken care of everybody else. I always say you should put your oxygen mask on first because if you don't, you're not going to be able to take care of anybody that you're going to take care of. But often when we're under high stress situations, caring for ourselves is the first thing to go out because we see our lists with all these things that we have to do. But one thing that I've found that really works for me for self-care that keeps me functioning is massage and energy work and just being with friends that can help lower my stress levels, even if it's just for that hour, hour and a half, I'm on the table. So today I'm get to bring you a dear friend who has kept me, I would say, physically functioning for, I don't even know how many years now, it's got to be over 14 years. My friend Cherie Abrams um, is here in the studio with me. So Cherie, thanks for being here. Hi, Laura. Thanks for inviting me. It's so great to have you here. You know, it's we first met through my friend Pam, our friend Pamela Aiden. Correct. Who's when I was coming down here visiting my parents, I'm like, I need a really good massage. He's a really great massage person. She goes, Oh, you got to go to Cherie, and we've just been friends ever since. And you know, weekly massage has become such an essential part of my well being that. When I had when I skipped it for I oh gosh almost eight months I, I the first time you worked on me again you were like what the heck happened to you <laughs> so you've been in this business for what over twenty five years it's been about twenty five years yes and that's not something that a lot of people in that wellness field can say that they've had a thriving practice for that many years how did you get into the world of massage and self-care because i know that's not where you started no it wasn't it, actually i was in the hospitality business for 15 years you know restaurant manager bar manager all that but in my 20s i got into martial arts Got my black belt in ninjutsu, and then I went to Corpus Christi, Texas, found a teacher there by accident, Tom Turcott, Dr. Tom Turcott, out of Orlando. Talk about faith. I trained under him for 20 years in Kung Fu. In part, he was old school. So I had to learn different things in order to get my black belt in Kung Fu. It's actually a gold sash, but we call it a black belt here in America. So I had to learn cupping, I had to learn basic massage, and that was shiatsu. I was taught first Suzuki Yamamoto's barefoot shiatsu system. Which I've experienced, which is, oh my God, so amazing. (laughs) Yeah, it it is really neat. And I started working on my fellow martial artists, my husband, my friends, and really, really felt the call. This is something I wanted to do, but I was realistic. I said, I'll save the money up for school, and if I still want to do it after I got all the money for school saved up, then I'll go. I still wanted to go. So that's what I did. I went to school, and the rest is history. You know, it's interesting that you said calling, because a lot of my last year's show, the 2018 season, 
I had a lot of guests on that talked about call of all. You needed to leave what you were doing behind, and this is what you were meant to be doing. When I realized how good I felt after I worked on somebody, because I made them feel good, I was able to help. And I guess it's in my personality. I like to help. So I got more, I was rewarded more. Okay. And and don't get me wrong, the restaurant hospitality business was very, very good to me. But you could, it's stressful. Nights, weekends, holidays, good money. But I was ready for a change and this just, it felt right. I just knew this is what I wanted to do because I enjoyed helping people. Okay, so you felt this calling to to change careers. You went to school, learned it, and then how did you actually get started with your own business? I mean, that's not something that a lot of massage people do in, in your world, and you've had spas, and it wasn't just a solo practitioner thing. That's, right. a, that's a lot of stress, but how did that start to come about that you knew you wanted to build upon and make this your own business versus working for somebody else? Well, when I first came out, massage therapy was around, but it's not like today where it's more commonplace now. It's not considered like it used to be. If you're going to get a massage, you're going to a massage studio for something else. That or <laughs> it's just foo-foo. Only gotcha. the rich, rich do it. And that is so wrong in so many different levels to think. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I got into it, and I knew I was going to be an independent contractor. Uh, there weren't a lot of options here in the county, Indian River County, when I first started out. So I had to get really creative. And I was still working. I demoted myself from restaurant manager to maitre d so i could really spend time on figuring out how to build my clientele and i started out very first out of school with carl blue baker who had a beachside therapeutic back in the 90s on cardinal drive as a fill-in therapist learned a lot from him great man and i was still maitre d in at uh disney Vero beach resort And one of the servers, we were chatting, and she congratulated me. And she says, you know, my husband really needs massage. And I said, what does he do? He's a skydiver. Oh. So I said, okay. I had no clue what skydiving consisted of but jumping out of a plane. Well, then you got to land. And land. (laughs) Of course, right? Nicely land. Nicely, gently, as we put it. And um, I said, well, sure, I'll give him a massage. And, of course, my residence is in Sebastian, and we have a drop zone there, a skydive facility. World-renowned. World-renowned. Of course, I knew it was there, but I just didn't know much about it until I worked on my friend's husband, and he got to talking. So I said, this might be a place for me to at least start. Okay. So I went there with all my insurance and this and that to sell myself to the owner to see if I could come out and set up my table and work on these skydivers. Again, I had no clue what I was in for. He was a British gentleman. He has since sold it to two other gentlemen. But Andy owned it in the beginning. And um, he said, sure, set up in the loft in the hangar. And that's how I started because at that point, about 150000 Thousand skydivers were coming through Sebastian per year. They were all the European teams. They would come here in the winter to train, then go back home in the summer to compete. That After my first year, I didn't look back. I stayed very busy working on skydivers. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it, but anybody from any kind of industry, whether they are in... Um, doing something physical like skydiving or me talking on the radio, you you still have a body. Yes. So no matter what you're doing, if you're sitting at a computer all day or you are doing massage all day, your body still needs to somehow be released and put back into a proper ease Yes, uh, we call that homeostasis. 
Okay. Balance. It's all in the yin-yang theory as well. Balance. We can't be one extreme or the other. And keeping that happy balance is a tricky thing. So even though you don't skydive, if you own your own business or you're in a high-stress job, that stress creates more damage than any physical activity you can do. All right. So you mentioned that massage is not just for the wealthy. No. But there is still that perception. Now, all these places have opened up, you know, massage envies, and this is not saying anything against them by any means whatsoever. But all of these places have begun to open up with trying to make it more accessible. Which I do think is a fantastic. We need to make it more accessible and more mainstream. And But yet, people still have this idea that taking that one hour or even a half hour to do a massage, or in my case, an hour and a half, but the other day when I was there, we were both like, man, you need about three hours of me working on you right now. Yes, we did. <laughs> just, to, just to start to unwind what the stuff that's going on. And so, so what can my listeners begin to do? Can you give them some questions or some thoughts that they can begin to do to help them understand that massage is for everyone? And what are perhaps some of the signs that they could benefit from massage? One of my biggest things I like to ex- talk to people to put it in something they can understand better is we're all high-performance race cars. In order to stay at peak performance in that car racing at its best, you better have a big pit crew. Okay. You uh, look at the Olympics. Right. Look at the Olympics and how, even though they're young, they're athletic. For them to keep at their performance, they do. They need chiropractors, massage therapists. They get cupping. They have doctors. They have physical therapists. So, and again, this is just not for high-performance sports. And it's not just for somebody who's, like, sick. No. No. Again, everyday stress. We're in season right now in our county where we have all our uh, part-timers back. Just driving in the morning can be a stressful adventure. Oh, yes, absolutely, because we have like four times the number of people living here in season than not in season. So I tell them, if you want your body to perform at a certain level, just like those race cars and athletes, we must take care of it. And if you choose massage, chiropractic, Pilates, yoga, walking, meditation, Whatever it is that you want to put in your toolbox, that's what you need to keep that balance and to perform. Just like a car or any any mechanical thing, if we don't maintain it, it's going to eventually break down. Are there signs inside the average person's body that would give them an indication that massage could help them? Oh, yes. If you're starting to take painkillers every day, that's a sign. Okay. If you're having to take a Tylenol every day because something aches or a a Lee because your back hurts or you're starting to get more migraines and headache due to tension and tightness, those are all signs. Some of the biggest signs, and for some people it's the bottom of the barrel, they have went all through that. They've taken all the BCs, the Tylenol, to the point they're starting to get ulcers and damage in their liver and they're having to find alternatives for the pain. And that's when I get them a lot. A lot of people, they get desperate. Then they realize, what was I waiting so long for? Right, because we tend to just go about our day mm-hmm. and, and ignore our body's warning signs. We do. We ignore them. So some of the initial warning signs are like what? Besides the painkiller thing, you said headaches, You, but are there other more subtle signs? Uh, there's a lot of different signs. Uh, twitching. Twitching. A lot of people get, like, get twitching in a certain muscle or into their eye or cheek, shoulder. There'd be a twitching muscle. That means somewhere the muscles are so tight 
that they're impinging on a nerve, causing it to overreact. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. So it's a good thing I'm going to you because I got a bunch of that going. <laughs> <laughs> One of the signs that I noticed uh, the, when I first really started going for massage, one of the signs I noticed was I was quicker to get triggered into being angry or my my emotions were more on edge. That was a sign for me. And that massage and the work that you do always seemed to just sort of calm my nervous system down. Absolutely. Again, there's that homeostasis. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I do massage, of course, what I'm doing is I'm breaking up lactic acids and toxins that are entrapped inside the muscles. When we do that, we allow, and it triggers endorphins that come in with fresh oxygenated blood. Because honestly, the number one healing element in our body is oxygen. Okay. How does oxygen get there? It piggybacks on blood cells. So the more I break up and allow the more oxygenated blood and endorphins come in to relax the nervous system. Okay. Calm. Oh, yes. Trust me. But when I do massage, depending on the person and depending on what they want, I'll do Reiki and guided Reiki meditation, which helps to trigger those endorphins that calms the nervous system down. So sometimes I'll do that before I even massage, physically massage them because they're so, how should I say, fight or flight mode. Right. Okay. So it calms. Yes. It Again, it brings balance. So a good warning sign for you, my listeners out there, and I hear this often from you, you just feel like there's something off, like there's. You just don't feel right. You know that something's changed, but you're not sure what's changed. And so, Sheree, it sounds like one of the great things, if you're feeling that, maybe find a really good massage person who can, for me, what I noticed is it helps connect my body and brain together again. It brings everything together. Um, I started off with traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, before I went to massage school and learn what we call Western medicine and massage. Okay, so there's two different forms These are two it? different sciences. Okay. And in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, we are trained that it's all connected, the physical with the emotional with the mental. Again, if you look at somebody who's had an open heart surgery, the heart and the heart sac, the pericardium, that is to us considered an organ. Of course, they take that heart sack off to work on that heart. Right. Now, granted, they needed it. It's saving their lives. But the emotion that goes with that heart is joy. And what happens when the heart's damaged? The opposite. Sadness, depression. And even the Western medicine doctors will tell you, after open heart surgery, be careful. There will be signs of depression. So to us, it's all connected. So when I start bringing the body's energy, chi, or san, or ki, it depends on which country you're from. Right. It's all the same. Bring in balance in those meridians, which we have all through our bodies, like little highways that run this energy. Bringing that balance not only helps physically, it helps emotionally and mentally. Have you noticed a difference between women and men in what they need for massage and how they respond to massage? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, again, it, it's not in all cases. Okay. But on mature, as a group, as a whole, women are really open and accepting and more game to be open to new things to see if it works. And they do. And they'll come back and let me know, no, the Reiki wasn't for me, but this was. Or, no, this wasn't for me, but the Reiki really helped. Where guys are, and it's, again, it's not all guys. But, again, I started off on a lot of skydivers, and they don't think they get their money unless I have them yelling. (laughs) So they need that really, really deep Deep, tissue. Yeah, they think I need to hurt them to make it therapeutic. Right. And there was something my little Cajun grandmother, Mama, as we called her, 
always taught me you get more flies with honey than vinegar. So through smart work, and I've learned how to get deep without having to make you scream and flop on the table like a fish out of water. So what if somebody feels that they need that, otherwise they don't feel it works? How do you I give balance it to them for that? the you first five, ten minutes. <laughs> and then once they get that and I start working pressure points and all that, they're good. They're good. And again, it's a mental thing for them. Well, that's a really good point because in any business, you have to know what your client is looking for and determine whether you can serve them or or not serve them if your products are attracting the right kind of clientele for what you're trying to serve, whether your products are what your clients want or need or I've seen this happen more often than not. Businesses fail because they're like, oh, my clients want this, and they don't. And they can't understand why nobody's buying their products or their services. And it's because you're not at the people that are being attracted to you don't want what you're offering. So you have to learn to switch that. So it sounds like you've over 20 plus, 24 plus years have learned how to accommodate to your client. What would be the the thought that you would leave out to my listeners to help them do that for their own clients. As much as we are alike, we are very different. And I take it case by case. Uh, Each person, depending on what happened to them in their past, may it be major car accidents, surgery, severe emotional trauma, depends on how I can cater that treatment for them. And I encourage feedback. I'm a, I am even get, not angry, but I, I kind of get on to them. You talk to me. If something doesn't feel right to you, talk to me. If you're not comfortable with it, we don't do it. Because we can find something else that does work. Right. I know there have been several times I've been at the table like, oh my God, that hurts. And then I go, oh, but that feels so good. You good know, it's, okay. it's Yeah, it's not sadomasochistic. It's you know when something's being touched, it, it'll initially hurt, but then as Cherie breaks through it, you know it's releasing something that shouldn't be there. So sometimes you have to bear a little bit with the pain. But I think that's really important, that whole feedback loop, is you have to communicate. So you have to communicate with your clients, but your clients need to communicate with you. So it's a listening, but you're also listening with your hands. Correct. Correct. And Normally, I tell them, if I don't catch it, speak up. Normally, I catch when their body is not comfortable with something and just instantly change it because the muscles are responding underneath my fingers. They're talking to me. Half the time, especially with someone new, I don't even open my eyes the first 30 minutes because I don't want them to get in the way because my hands are my eyes. And it is true. People with vision problems Make the best therapist. Blind people make the best therapist. Because their other senses are so much more acute? Correct. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So we're going to go into the national news break right now. I'm here with local celebrity, as far as I'm concerned, Sheree Abrams here in uh, Vero Beach, Florida. And we'll be right back with more self-care talk. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with somebody in the studio for once. It's so exciting to have local celebrity. She's been... Well, born and raised in Indian River County back when uh, Indian River County was just like a little, basically all we had was groves, right? That was it. Yeah, we called it Zero Beach when I was a kid. (laughs) And you've seen it change to the nth degree, right? Oh, has it ever, yes. Uh, So Sheree Abrams, dear friend, is here with me today. She is a massage therapist, but so much more. She's also an entrepreneur, a business owner, and just... One of the people I go to when I don't know what's going on in my body or I'm just feeling like I'm losing it and my whole body hurts and I'm tired of popping ibuprofen or just because I need somebody to make me smile. And she graciously agreed to be on the show with me today. And we're talking about self-care. We've also, in the first half of the show, we talked, right, Sheree, about how you got into this and how you grew your business. And for anybody who missed the first half of the show, it will be going to podcast. And you can go to itsallaboutthequestions.com and you can get it there or iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere a podcast you listen to, you can get to the show. But, you know, Sheree, we were talking just before the break about 
how men and women are different yet the same in the way they react to massage, the, what they're looking for in massage. And we started talking about how you listen with your hands mm-hmm. when you're working on somebody. In business, how do you listen to see what kind of things your clients might be looking for? I mean, I know you have specials every single month, and I know you. They're not just random specials. you are kind of been listening to what your clients have been asking you for? Oh, correct. And I know this sounds strange, but depending on what's going on and all that, I kind of, after being in it for so long, I can prepare myself. I I know what might be coming up. For example, we had a cut for us Floridian crackers here. We had a cold snap of 40. Yeah, it was cold. (laughs) It was cold for us. Well, can I tell you, I got myself prepared, and sure enough, the phone has been ringing off the hook. Because when it gets cold, we do lose 25% of our flexibility in oxygen and blood in our muscles, which makes us stiffer and tighter. So all those little aches and pains sort of get amplified. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So for people up north right now, where I'm originally from, who have minus nine and all these other temperatures, massage sounds like a self-care thing that, well, they can really use right now even more than just in the summer. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some things, because not all my listeners may have the funds or the mental preparedness to say, okay, I'm going to go get a massage. So are there things that somebody can do at home with some sort of self-massage to help them initially? Yes. Um, And uh, trust me, I have all these toys myself because when I get home at 8 o'clock at night, I'm like, God, I need a massage, but I can't find anybody at 8 o'clock at night. Alvin's not going to do it, your husband. No, (laughs) he's not going to do it unless I work on him first, and by then I'm over it. I'm over it. So there are many different things you can do that self-care, and I even uh, encourage people to do this that are even getting massage. One of them is, it's so simple, an Epsom salt soak. Epsom salt is a combination of sea salt and magnesium. The sea salt draws the lactic acids and the toxins. It detoxes the muscles. Where magnesium is Mother Nature's muscle relaxer. And here's where people will tell me, well, it didn't work for me. And my first question is, how much did you put in the tub? A cup. Well, that's what it says on the package, okay? So I have one of those big soaking tubs, and it says put a cup. And I'm like, how is this going to make a difference? It won't. So what's the real ratio? Your standard tub, I tell them to put half the bag in. It's cheap. So Six. those are like what I call the 1950s little kid tubs, right? Right. Half the bag. Okay. Half the bag. If you've got a big garden tub, the whole bag. And we're talking a one pound, two pound, five pound bag? What are we talking? And we're talking, I think it's the one pound bag. Okay. Or, yes, I think, yes, put the whole bag in. It takes more than a cup. If you read the directions very carefully on Oh, not all Epsom salt directions. They'll say one cup per gallon. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, you don't need that much. Okay. But, yes, at that price, put the whole bag in if you want. It won't hurt you. Okay. I do warn people, depending on how much toxins, especially if they've gone through chemo, radiation, any drug therapies or had major surgery, when they do a heavy Epsom salt soak, I tell them, just put a terry cloth robe on afterwards because some of us will just, our pores open and you'll sweat, literally sweat for 30 minutes. Okay. It has triggered and starting to detox. And it's way our body is getting rid of the toxins is by sweating. Okay. So an Epsom salt bath. And what else? Um, Liniments. There are all types of liniments out there. Find one that works for you. Uh, there's the old standard you can get in the uh, store, like Icy Hot Bengay. I do not personally use those in my practice because there's too many chemicals, and I, I have a problem with people reacting allergy-wise. Okay. Um, so I don't care to use that. One of my favorites I've been using forever, and you can't find it locally. You'll probably have to get online to find it, 
It's called white, W-H-I-T-E, flower. It's a little ch- bottle of Chinese liniment. It looks like water when you're pouring it out. I tell people, even blend it with a little bit of um, either coconut oil or any of any oil you got in your kitchen, like olive oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil. Any of those are fine. Blend that with it and then spread it around the injured area. And obviously don't use peanut oil or any of those oils if you're allergic to them. Oh, <laughs> correct, correct. Don't use any nut oils that you're allergic to. There's plenty of different kinds. I just tell people do not use a lotion with a fragrance in it. Okay. It can get overwhelming because the white flower is full of essential oils and camphor that help. And I've been using it to over 20 years. And I'm yet to have someone have a reaction. I know my mom, towards the end, when she was having lots of trouble with her back, you had suge- you had put that on her because I would bring mom in to you. And mom was always, I don't need a massage. I don't need a massage. I don't want a massage. There's nothing wrong with me. Massage makes me feel worse, whatever. And she would come with me when I would get a massage. And you and I had always planned to trick her. Like, oh, why don't you just come in for like a half an hour? And when mom got done she's like oh that felt really good and you can literally see a shift in her in her whole being the tension that she didn't even realize she was holding all the time and mom was quite sick that you helped and that at night before she went to bed i would rub the white flower essence on her and it made such a huge difference in her back yeah yes um liniments are my go-to okay I use a lot of them in my practice, and I have a variety at home for myself and my husband. So I find, but find the one that works for you. Okay. Are there areas of the body that are really great for self massage? Hands, shoulders, feet? Are there to to help with somebody beginning to explore this whole idea of massage? Yes. um, It's a little hard with your own hands if you don't know what you're doing doing right like working certain trigger points on your arms and wrists or you know on the bottom of your feet but speaking of the feet all else fails work your feet while you're watching tv i wish you could see her because she's using her hands and her (laughs) thumbs and and she's totally like manipulating as if she's working on somebody's feet it's totally priceless it's out of habit (laughs) (laughs) but the as far as reflexology goes, that's the science of the foot and foot treatments. The whole body is mapped out in the feet. So if you can work your feet, and I tell people you can get funny little knobby balls to roll your feet on while you're watching TV or working on the computer. I tell people to not drink it unless you're a cola drinker. Okay. But get you one of the old glass Coca-Cola or RC bottles. Dump it, wash it. Because of all the grooves and stuff, you lay it on a towel and you can roll your feet and get them in the grooves and back and forth. It feels good. And for some people with lots of inflammation in the feet, I tell them to put the Coke bottle in the freezer. Okay. And then roll the cold Coca-Cola bottle. It helps reduce the edema in the feet. And and feet are such a, a huge trigger point for people because you're on them all day long but ears are also a major map for the body as well correct ears are a big one there's over 250 points acupuncture points in the ears alone again look at the air if you're not driving and you can google the air look at it it looks like an embryo or a little baby inside the uterus upside down your lobe is the head, the ear back here is the spine, the top of that big lobe is the hips and legs curled up, and on the outer part, this is all considered muscles, knees, eyes, legs, hip, internal part of the ear where it goes into that valley, I call it, that's all your internal organs and glands and everything. So just work in your ears, and especially if you have babies that are upset or sick or colicky, gently massage their ears and feet, and you'll see wonders. They'll calm down. I remember there was a movie, The Truth About Cats and Dogs, and this guy was a photographer, and he was 
he had this dog and they're trying to take these pictures and this dog was complete crazy dog and this veterinarian comes and and helps him and because she had a call-in show and and she, he was in chaos he was trying to get some help and she goes just massage his ears and she's like he's like i don't even know how i can get to his ears and she's like just grab him and start rubbing his ears and Correct. in seconds the dog calmed down and for anybody who has pets out there cats dogs whatever as soon as you start massaging their ears just rubbing them gently they just sort of curl up and just relax so it's same thing for humans as absolutely well. absolutely and I considered them very smart. Smarter than most of yes, us. Yes, because they know what feels good. Right. And this is the joke I have because it's part of my treatment. I rarely forget the ears unless I'm really focusing on a certain injury or post-surgery cupping or something. I will focus on the ears. And for people who never had their ears done, I always get this comment, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize how good that felt. Right. And I says, now you know why your dogs and cats demand it. Yeah, they literally do because they'll yes. just curl right into you or put their heads by them. All right. So you mentioned something that I want to make sure we cover before the end of the show. You said post-surgical. And you've mentioned cancer patients and, and things like that. A lot of people and traditional Western medicine, as we know it here in the Amer- in the United States, they'll be like, no, you can't go get massage after surgery. You can't do things like that. Yet, I know every time I've had surgery, one of the first things I've done is arranged for a massage, it, and it's made a huge difference. So how does somebody know to, to do that? Because it is kind of scary. You want to listen to your doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do tell them to listen to the doctor to get approval prior. Depends on the surgery. Like I do a lot of hip, knee surgeries, things like that. Um, Of course, we don't want to do anything until the actual incision is completely healed. Okay. Because we don't want to take a chance with that. Now, I can work above it. I can work below it. And around to get the system to relax and calm down until we can actually get in or the hip, wherever that incision is. But yes, I tell them to listen and I talk to them too. And a lot, of, it, it is an individual case by case situation. I know that my ex husband and my mom, after their open heart surgeries, you worked on them and they're like, no, 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 you know, I can't. And, but you worked on their feet and their lower legs. And it was amazing. And then on their shoulders, and mm-hmm. they couldn't understand why their shoulders and their shoulder blades, the erector muscles, why it made such a huge difference. And you'd said to me that, especially the shoulders and the erectors, when they're doing open heart surgery, they actually sort of open your ribs up. So it puts a lot of stress on those muscles when they pull it back. So by working on the legs and that back, you relaxed all of that. So it took some of the pain and stress away. Is that correct? Correct. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of open heart surgery uh, patients I get, they're doing great until after a few months, and then in between their shoulders, neck are so bad they can't move or look down. And again, I I started catching on quick when I started massage therapy, and this is where I love the internet. When I'm getting something I don't understand, I'll actually Google and want to watch that surgery. If I can. <laughs> yeah, you're one of those, huh? I'm one of those. <laughs> no yeah. way. Oh, my husband has come in and gone, oh, gross. Turn it off. I'm like, what? <laughs> Leave the room. But it gives me an idea of what the body's going through. So what parts of the anatomy beyond Correct. what's being worked on are being affected? Being affected. E- Correct. So this gives me an idea and helps me do my job better and attack the situation more okay. quickly. So I've learned all these years there I can always do something to make someone feel better and to calm their system, calm their their emotions, calm the mental down, everything. Even if they got still staples in their sternum. Like you said, I work the referral points, I'll work the ears, the shoulders, the feet, the hands, the legs. But we stay away from the torso. When my dad, the first time I convinced him to go to you for a massage, he was dealing with Parkinson's very badly and had a number of falls and all this. And, you know, he couldn't 
lay down on a table. So you, you just had them in a sitting up position. I mm-hmm. remember you came to the house at the dining room table and you put all this stuff there for his arms to rest and you just work certain areas of his body. And I rem- never forget my dad completely resistance to the whole idea of massage. The first time after you worked on him, he was in shock. He just couldn't believe how different he felt. And I remember for days afterwards, he was shaking less and the freezing that happens with Parkinson's with the walking, he wasn't shuffling. He was actually walking and taking a stride and he couldn't understand it. So, so many things that we don't even think about that can be helped can be helped. Absolutely. I work with Parkinson's, MS, scleroderma, all sorts of neurology disorders, permanent nerve damage. The, the permanent nerve damage is where someone had gotten injured and a nerve was severed, and they got the choice of massage or morphine. Well, that's a dramatic difference between it, uh, the two. I, I know that, I isn't it? But it's it can be that bad, some of the nerve damage. So, yes, I can always work, find a way to work on people, and it just helps those situations. I work on tons of cancer people. My mom just passed away not too long ago from bone cancer. Again, she had it in her bones, so I couldn't press. It was too painful. But I could use the liniments, and I could cup. And even though she was gone, I'm very resistant to cupping, when people are going through chemotherapy, uh, because it brings, it'll make them feel like they're getting another chemotherapy treatment because it pulls all the toxins to the t- surface. Gotcha. Okay. But my mom was doing so well on the chemo with no side effects but losing her hair, bless her heart, that I was okay with the cupping. And we were able to keep that pain at a minimum. Okay. And to the very end. All right. So there, there's so many different kinds of massage. How does somebody who isn't living locally, because you're, you're going to share, well, why don't you share how people who are living locally can reach out to you if they want to get a massage? Let's start there. Okay. Um, I am located in Indian River County, and my telephone number is 772-584-0900. My webpage is shereeabrams.com. That's C-H-E-R-I-A-B-R-A-M-S dot com. You can call if you just have questions. You can get on my website. You can email me. I'm happy to do any of that. Just know that I am a busy with season. I might not pick up right away, but I always get back the same day, even if it's after work in the evening. Right. And you're located at, in Vero Beach, it's Star Pilates. Correct. Who, and Ginny Murphy has been on the show before, and she's a dear friend, and people have heard me talk about her right on Miracle Mile. And you also have a location in, in Sebastian. Mm-hmm. But right here in, in Vero Beach, just amazing to get to Cherie over on Miracle Mile. Say your phone number one more time, Cherie. 772 772- Five eight four oh nine oh seven. And if somebody's not here locally, and I know they can call up and ask questions, what are some things they want to look for when they're looking for a massage person? Here's the thing. I, I had taught also for Space Coast Massage Institute for 10 years. And I went in to introduce traditional Chinese medicine relating to massage therapy to all the new students. And we would get this question a lot, and this was the best way I could put it. What makes a bad massage or a good massage? That's a really good question. That's a very good question. So I asked the whole class, tell me the best song on the planet. What is the best song on the planet? It's a very personal Do you know everybody had a different answer? Right. So I said, a good massage or a bad massage is an opinion. But it's just not- like the, your opinion on what's really good music. So I tell them, do your homework. Ask friends. Ask doctors. Okay. Ask your chiropractor, whoever you have in your life. And again, I'm not for everybody. Some people think I'm too tough and gruff and strong. Some people think I'm too light and weak. 
or they just don't like my touch. It's okay. Right. I am not designed to help everybody on the planet. But I stay true to what I do, and the people I can help come to me, and it works. So okay. I tell people, you might have to try a few therapists to find who works for you. And if you ever feel uncomfortable during a massage, speak up, get up, whatever you need Bingo. to do. Bingo. Yeah. Because that's my f- biggest thing, especially with new clients. I inform them, you must tell me if something you're not comfortable with. Because if you're not comfortable with it, we won't do it. Yeah. And as a woman, I've had massages from men and from women, and I've had great experiences with um, a male massage person and a female, but I know some women are completely uncomfortable with a, mis- a male, and there are some men that are uncomfortable with males or females. So you do need to, to search out and find. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. What's a last thought you'd like to leave my listeners with? Just enjoy life. I, I'm serious. I, I, we all work too hard. Everything. This is where all the stress, this ache and pains come from. Take time out for yourself, even if it's just five, ten minutes a day. Doing whatever it is you like to do the most. And you can add in some self-massage that Cherie was talking about. Your ears, your feet, um, bringing in that connected i know you do meditations mm-hmm. as well absolutely you have sound healing meditations and Correct. you have one of my favorite things this cupping facial yes yes <sighs> it's one of my favorites too when oh i God. get it done i fall asleep every time I, yeah. I was more relaxed than i think i've ever been in my entire life and people are like for weeks and weeks afterwards they're like you look so much younger and i think it's because all the stress just left my absolutely. my face and my body funny you mentioned that that's the special i'm gonna have for february is it? Cupping facial. All right, I'm in. you got to book me for another one of those because I love that so you much. you got it. All right, so everybody, for me, massage is one of my critical self-care functions, and I'm not really good at doing it for myself. So I go to somebody like Cherie, and I really recommend you do too. So CherieAbrams.com, check her out. And remember, everybody, the right questions can change your life. Think about what you're asking yourself today, everybody. And... I encourage you, just get yourself a massage today and call Cherie because she's awesome. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today.